Hey y'all, I'm Carolina Tony. Today, the road brings me to McCall, South Carolina. This is a former textile town. There were at least three textile industries here in town. They are no longer here, but I'm gonna take you around and show you where they used to be. Tell you a little bit about some of the history here. And we'll get started right after this station identification. In the early 1880s, a railroad was being built from Fayetteville, North Carolina to Bennettsville, South Carolina. Two businessmen, T.B. Gibson and J.F. McLaurin, persuaded the railroad to build a depot here in McCall. At the, at the time, McCall was very small, not really officially a town. Soon after, others join in, they bought stock, and the depot became the first building in town. Not 100% sure where it, was been, where it was built, but perhaps in that area right there. The town was named for Duncan McCall of Bennettsville, who during the time of the building, and a time afterward, he was the president of the South Carolina Pacific Railroad. On the side of the old McCall Theater, there is a plethora of ghost signs. The very top, we can still make out the F.P. Tatum and Sons Company General Merchandise. And under that, of course, the Pepsi logo, Bull Durham Smoking Tobacco and the J.D. Getty and Sons carpets. Right up under that, that is a little newer, probably the 70s. After the 1970s and 1980s, the textile mills have since closed down and either went out of business completely or move to Mexico, has a lot of textile places in the United States has. And we are left with the beginnings of a bona fide ghost town. Just a few buildings are left here. The Getty and Cole Center, that was the theater, as you can see, they have preserved the old ticket booth in the theater. And that little building was the bank. The old Spencer's was a dime store, and right next to that was BC Moore's, which is a which was a department store. It was based out of the town that I live in, Sherall. It's where all the Moores lived. Next to Moore's was a doctor's office, and then a drugstore right on the very end on the corner. After the development of the depot, quickly industry came to McCall, the textile industry, and built their cotton mill businesses close to the railroad tracks. This is the O. Marie textile mill. And there's a separate mill village from the mill on the other side of town. This mill dates back to the late 1800s. Of course, the textile mill has long been gone. 
but this is all that's left of it. Portion of it's been repurposed for another company. Let's take a look at some of the Mill Village. This is part of the Marie Textile Mill Mill Village. All these houses will have been occupied by the mill workers. And they could live here as long as they worked in the mill in exchange for a portion of their paycheck. More than likely the biggest portion of their paycheck. It's real convenient that the textile mill owners would build the mill villages close to work so there was no need for cars. This is another location for a textile mill. It has all been leveled off now. This is actually one that Debbie's grandmother worked at. So there's three textile mills in McCall that we know of. And this was a pretty bustling town in its day. This is the Methodist Church in McCall, right on Main Street. A beautiful dome on the top of it. And I've heard that the stained glass can be seen from the inside. On a Wednesday night, a lot of people that lived on this street were at prayer meeting when some of them came home, they noticed their houses were gone. And actually, the ones that weren't gone were all out in the streets. Notice a lot of these houses, they are a little newer. In fact, all the houses on this particular street were blown away. In fact, all the houses, except for these two houses facing each other, the tornado decided to skip these two. And a lot of folks lost their lives on that night. This is a monument at the old McCall police station in memory of those that lost their lives on the night of March the 28th, 1984. Ruth Nolan, Denise Nolan, Kathy Labine, Colin Labine, Hamp Shelley, Onita Deaver. This is the old King's grocery store. It was on the right, and then the other side was just a hangout. Gail's Place. Now, Gail's Place was a hangout, but no alcoholic beverages allowed there. McCall First Presbyterian Church. This particular building was built in 1909 it moved from the red bluff area which is a few miles outside of town between here and the next town over clo which i've done a video on and if you hadn't seen it you may find it interesting this house has been abandoned for many years but it has character if any house has ever had character this house does and it's all boarded up and you can't go inside but it looks like somewhere the monsters live you see up there at the arch 1893 a lot of these buildings has fallen into disrepair and the roofs have caved in and they're gutted such as that one across the street this one has been converted into a church and i believe that's just a facade on the back side. It is completely gone. I was told that back in the 1950s, 1960 era, that this area was known as Greasy's Corner. It was a little grocery store, but on Friday nights, you could find men with high levels of alcohol and testosterone present for the Friday night fist fights. 
right across the state line. McCall, South Carolina. But back in the 1950s, that section of North Carolina being dry, meaning it was against the law to sell alcohol. About 45, 30 to 45 minutes up the road was Fort Bragg. And that area was dry as well. So a lot of those soldiers would come to McCall to consume alcohol. Right after coming over the state line, this would have been one of the first places that they would get to. It's now a flower shop. But back in the day, it was known as the Brick. This would have been a beer joint, honky-tonk. And one side of the building had a dirt floor, and the other side was a hardwood floor. And they drink and dance to the wee hours of the morning. Now, other things would happen too. At one time, there was a flat roof on the top of this building with an outdoor jukebox dancing on the roof. Well, this is how Jim's drive-in looks now. A little different. Still in the family. Something like it. I know it was yeah, well, that's, that's what I remember. So back then, it was known as Jim's drive-in. Mm -hmm. And Jim's son owns it now. Oh, cool. Kept it in the family. Yep. Okay, this is the Eisman Mill in McCall. Started around 1901. One of the many textile mills here in McCall. Of course, it's band abandoned now. Later on in the 1900s, it was changed to Covington Mill. This is one of four cotton mills that was in McCall. One's completely gone, the other has been repurposed for something else. And this one is on its last leg, as you can see. The roof has caved in and rotted, and rotted a hole in the floor. Still, with enough money, it could be saved. that worked in a place like this that would be known as lint heads. What well, probably sound like a bad name, but not really. Lint coming from the raw cotton fibers flying in the air and landing in your hair. As simple as that. Looks like perhaps the office, main office, course as always vandals coming in and tear the place up the train doesn't stop here anymore the interstate has been built 40 miles up the road and this is what happens when progress comes but bypasses a small town. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our trip to McCall, South Carolina. If you did, be sure to give me a big old thumbs up. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. But until next time, y'all have a good day.